So hello everyone in the second part of the newspaper session. We are taking the Indian Express here. So the very first page, we actually don't have any important news. As far as the Ganesh idol is concerned, so what we are seeing that lack of political will and lack of judicial will, today we are seeing that there is no ban which is being put on you know, putting Ganesh idol um, very badly into the rivers, into the streams, into the oceans, which is somehow taking us back in performing religion, festivals and traditions. Like, oh, I would like to ask you one question regarding this caste census or caste survey, which has been done by Bihar. So, uh, according to you, why do you think there is a need for doing this caste survey? Well, the very uh, because number one is to identify the beneficiaries of the reservation who are taking the reservation under the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and OBC category. Because there is there are num there are incidences of duplication where the where some upper caste are also having the you know the reservation they are taking by making the false identity cards on the basis of their caste. So this could be the primary reason. And yeah, I can say now. That, don't you think ki this data would be misused also on the basis? Yeah, of there are apprehensions. There are apprehensions that uh, this could be politicized for vote bank politics. Yeah, I agree. So despite that, then why did the Supreme Court allow you know to go forward with this caste survey? If there are apprehensions that there's a possibility of misuses of this data. Supreme Court. So the, yeah. so the calculative risk um, has been taken because if there are apprehensions on the apprehensions, the, the executive and the judiciary can take steps. But if you will provide the beneficiaries, the wrong beneficiaries, the reservation, uh, you know, affirmative action. So that is again putting a dent on the justice and the fairness in the society. So this could be the primary reason. Okay. Then move forward. So will weather aid in capital's pollution fight like last year? Unlike says experts. So here we see in Delhi that every year the stubble burning issue comes into picture because of the depleting Delhi's air quality. We have instruments like SUFFER which provide the weather forecasting. It's the full name is System of Air Quality and Weather Forecasting Research which provides data on air quality indicators to the city and in the NCR region. There are some technological factors also in this. So number first is the behavioral uh, action we have to take into account, which is the realization of uh, the environmental and ecological biodiversity. We should protect the environment. We should drive environment friendly culture. That is the primary step we can take. And on the other parts, the, tech, the agencies and the environmental uh, you know, agencies are taking their steps. They also have impacts like La Nina suffers abnormally, refers to abnormally cool sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific Oceans. And El Nino is a phenomenal phenomenon of warm waters in the Pacific Ocean. So these are two important concepts of the geography, um, which actually have an impact on our agriculture, on our climate, on our rain. And then we have a graded response action plan, which was started by uh, the executive on the recommendations of the Supreme Court, which came into effect on October 1 this year, and it will measure the air quality index from which is having a poor category range from 201 to 300 in Delhi. If we talk, so Heron, since the main problem is that there is less time between harvesting and sowing of the next crop, so that's why farmers mostly in Punjab and Haryana they go for stubble burning. So, what solutions would you suggest to address this problem? Well, the, the very first solution could be that uh, the stubble one, uh, we have a happy cedar machine, the infrastructure facility should be provided by the government. And uh, then we have uh, some, uh, you know, stubble burning reduction technologies, which was started by Pusa Institute of Delhi. 
so those things should be provided as it is as it is being implemented in the delhi and uh, third thing is some you know institutional support should be provided to the farmers in the form of the state of the art technology early weather forecasting but i don't think that stubble burn stubble burning is the root cause of delhi's air pollution i don't think so because stubble burning is not a new phenomenon it is happening since at ages the time, at the same time we can't ignore it also as you're saying ki root cause nahi hai jo delhi mein do main factors hai wo exist karte but this is also one of the important factors so three yes, i agree that this is one of the important factor but as far as as far as the percent and the ratio of stubble burning is concerned we are actually focusing too much on stubble burning rather than focusing on the other areas for an example i earlier mentioned also that in the delhi is the root the major problem of the uh, air pollution is the construction and construction sector where the environmental impact assessment reports are not properly submitted the environmental precautions are not taken the green cushions are not put outside the buildings but by the property uh, you know construction dealers so these are some of the major lacunas where the agencies are not working properly and this is a kind of i agree that this is a problem but this is being politicized so much because of which the root problems are not being considered properly yeah but we'll keep it objective that it is also important and we can't ignore it so here and i'll just like to add up ki since jo main problem hai that is the less time farmers ke paas exist karte hain farmers ko actually they're not aware ki unko karna kya hai stubble ka so they go for stubble burning so here in is crisis ko we can turn into an opportunity by you know opening up ventures for the farmers ki they can sell this stubble as a by product which can be utilized in other areas and this can also as a as an opportunity asset case can be converted into an opportunity because farmers income can be supplemented by selling this stubble so that's how it can you know economically also uh, improve the conditions of the farmers when we even in talk haryana, about in, in the state of haryana the 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 suggestion which you gave it is already in being implementation yes yeah, so we need to implement this in punjab also na kyunki main problem is in punjab Okay, so would this uh, uh, help in controlling the air pollution? Definitely, it would help if you're not burning stubble burning and you would be selling that stubble in the market. So definitely, it is going to reduce the cases of stubble burning and help uh, in reducing the quality of you know the air pollution as well, like improving the quality of air. Okay, so there are two problems I can cite in this example. Number one is that on such a large level, it is very much you know a lengthy process for the government to actually procure from the farmers and number 2 what what the government will do what the government is going to do if the government is providing money also in return in lieu of the stubble from the farmers what the government is planning to do with the, of this stubble it can be used uh, as a clean energy source it can be used uh, there uh, like in ethanol uh, production it can be used apart from this uh, you know small pellets can be generated from these uh, stubble which can be again used as a source of fuel so therein it can be utilized and as you just mentioned ki long procurement process so wahan pe again we need to work we can't say ki since it is going to take a long time to procure so this is not a good option wahan pe again we can use e technology and we need to ensure ki kaise is process ko hum pass in kar sakte hai but again we can't give this kind of an excuse ki this cannot be again relied upon because this is a long time and long time taking process to procure this stubble from the farmers okay okay move forward so on the editorial page we are taking this uh, article by t raja mohan which is on canada's polo moral politics so he is saying that it is strange that india and canada are were once bound by strong idealism and liberal commitment as a global order but canada has found it hard to build a sustained productive relationship with india if ottawa takes a fresh look at delhi and begins engagement rooted in real politics the current crisis gets serve a purpose and foreign policy elite Um, have a puzzle that current crisis is unwilling to take political look at the character of the khalid khan excellent affair minister has put his statement on this issue as a permissive vote bank politics which became specially acute under pm trudeau and the american scholar 
Walter Russell Mead has written about the US and Anglo Saxon engagement, which drew attention to this. Canada's moral politics had some utility. It had defined a Canadian identity, which is not so easy in the shadow of the US. And when you are principled, it is easy to be principled when you are not responsible for anything. So we have military alliances, we have economic relationship with the US, Canada, which stands on the global issue and differentiate itself from the Washington. Ottawa, ke saath, uh, China has diplomatic relations nahi hai from, since the 1970s. And US is considered as a mischief and Canada is a helpful fixer. Although Canada was a founding member of NATO and India, the leader of NAM, two sides found it beneficial to work together. So we can say that both the countries were working in a in a fashionable manner on dip, various diplomatic affairs. We have a Colombo plan also, under which the Canada offers significant development assistance to India. Or if we talk about Canada, Kito, Canada has helped India to build a research nuclear reactor, which is on a scientist that would hone India's skills to produce plutonium that would be used in nuclear weapons. So the Canada's active engagement in various multiple sectors in India is being seen. Power reactor that would be foundation of India's power gen nuclear power generation. And Canada, Canada is among the last nation to come to terms with the US efforts when India's disputes with the global nuclear order during 2005 to 8. But, Canada, but Canada's India's relationship which holds great economic strategic potential is not beyond repair. So we can say that yes, they are repairable. And Delhi has classified that assassination of terrorists is not India's policy, will cooperate with Ottawa on credible intelligence sharing. In turn, India expects Canada to stop empowering the Khalistani extremists and current political impunity that enjoys crack down on their violent activities. So in, all, in total, we can say that Indian government is democratically, diplomatically, and in the real politics trying to take into account the Canada's government and the Canada's supreme political leadership so that both the, both the countries' relationship can function in a smooth manner on, uh, you know, on a compromising note. And the current crisis, because of which the various diplomatic efforts have been taken, whether we talk about the visa cancellation, the exp and the expel of uh, both the countries' and diplomats in the form of ambassadors. So we should try to rebuild our relationships on the similar ideas which are considered as idealism and liberal internationalist commitment for the global order. So we can move down. So here and again, it is just you so, know, about winter crop. Yeah, it's about stock limits and better technology and policies he's focusing upon to improve the agriculture sector and to provide the farmers with better returns for their products. So here in one solution is also suggested, Patwari-based production estimate system. Actually, we need to upgrade our Patwari-based production estimate system to one that is in high technology. But I will cite one shortfall of this uh, you know, suggestion of Shri Ashok Gulati ji. That Patwari based production system is going to be very much corrupted, very much rat typeism. The reason being today itself, when we are focusing on digitization, e governance, social economic governance, so the Patwari based production system is going to hamper the growth of the farmers and the growth of the agriculture sector, especially when we have the uh, Patwari based system, which is considered as the root cause of uh, you know, corruption in the land reform, the root cause of problem in the agriculture mechanization, because the data which they comprise, which they have, that leads to a lot of manipulation also. So we need to actually work on various principles rather than focusing on the so Patwari. That's, so that's what he's suggesting, that we need to upgrade the system. We need to bring in high technology so that Jo, again, data manipulation kiya jata hai, wo possible na ho pae, because technology would be involved, so that cannot be done. So I think rather than going for the Patwari-based production, we should go for the digital-based production. No, Patwari-based production system is already there. We need to upgrade that and we need to basically reform it so that it works efficiently and again, local level, it can be an important role play. Kar sake. So it is already functioning. So our CGI Chief Justice of India, Shri Chandrachur, is saying that Mahatma Gandhi's message is a beacon of hope because he taught a number of idealists and, uh, you know, 
countries favor messages like life, humanism, message of harmony, tolerance. When we are today talking about harmony, fraternity in, in domestic as well as international relations, it provides us a spiritual sense and a guiding light for all of us that lead, his ideas leads to providing an insight into various verdicts of the Supreme Court and the High Courts in transcending cultural geographical barriers. He promoted equitable just society, universalism, and a philosophy of non-violence, fraternity among the people. And his vision was of a testament of commitment towards peaceful coexistence of the United World, which the whole world is today focusing upon. And his, he focused on empathy also by embracing the practicing so that we can post a culture of inclusivity and acceptance and practicing sustainable lifestyles providing us valuable guidance especially when we are talking about the environmental conservation and environmentally friendly today's lifestyle so all these ideas are inspirational for the world for the future generation and we should try to incorporate in our life in our work and in our spirit also. and specifically i would so also yeah that uh, Gandhiji's food habits, when we promoted having raw food, having no salt uh, intake, and then also, you know, promoting more balanced diet. So these can also play an important role in when you talk about changing and, you know, bringing a change in our daily lifestyle. So as you just mentioned, Adam, the diet part. So I would like to ask you that today we are focusing, not focusing, today we are heading too much towards the Chinese food culture, towards the Western food culture. Yes. So obviously that is yes. going to have some harmful and hazardous impact on our, uh, you know, dividend demographic or our youth or our adult. So mm. what steps do you, uh, you know, suggest here that we should try to incorporate so to prevent our generations to go towards this culture and focus on the mota and our millet so that we can lead a healthy life? See, firstly, we can hear in utilize the social media platform that we have in terms of generating more awareness like we can run awareness generation uh, awareness generation campaigns on social media platforms in order to tell ki what they're eating is not going to be healthy for them and jo ignorant behavior hai, that can be addressed through this so majorly we can target the social media platform as a uh, you know awareness generation Platform, when we talk about, uh, like we have uh, online apps like Zomato and Swiggy to order food and usme bhi we need to mention, uh, like suppose we are ordering any healthy food, so we have all the specificities regarding ki kitane calories hai. So even unhealthy food, jo hai, jitane bhi food options available hai, sab ke paas wo data, wo data again needs to be made transparent ki if you are having suppose any unhealthy or junk food, to usse aap kitani calories intake kar rahe ho, usme kitna fat hai, kitna saturated fat hai, kitna content of salt hai or oil hai. So ye cheeze jab again, it would be more visible and aapke saamne hoogi, to accordingly even, you know, uh, I expect ki that is going to bring a change in your decisions also regarding your food habits. So yeah, I, I, I appreciate your step uh, and this is going to definitely improve uh, with the behavioral revolution. But on the ground level, I would like to, uh, you know, cite that we should try to fortify the food culture. I mean, like we fortify the rice fortification we do. On the similar pattern, we should try to fortify the Chinese food culture in India. And in that, we can add on some healthy products. For an example, we have the Maggi, which is used to be made by maida so we can try to you know use the wheat maggi and wheat chow mein and so that if people actually wants to eat so they should be allowed to eat but they should eat something which is justifiable which is healthy so on the ground level we can do this kind of thing to promote the healthy culture like in different yeah you are right we, we can promote in the healthy aspects the healthy delicacies more instead of the junk that is already there yeah. So agencies asked to find details of terror related to activities in Pakistan. So MHA holds multi-level agency meetings. So this is a, a topic of internal security where the Minister of Home Affairs is currently having a, an insight and a surveillance over the Pakistan uh, related matters where the Multiple agencies have been made to sit on counter-terrorist grid. So this meeting of multi-agency center 
which is a newly created center which focuses on counter terror operations so it is having a common counter terrorism grid with various states having international boundaries they sit together and formulate the counter terrorism plans and where especially in the state of pak uh, you know punjab we have its chances of radicalization led by madrasas in pakistan and it's used of ngos and civil societies so multiple languages we are taking that's for an example we have foreign exchange um, you know act which actually focus on uh, ngos to prevent the misuse of funds from international boundaries then sorts of mobilization and terror outfits are also promoting the infiltration of humans infiltration of drugs infiltration of arms and ammunition so on that also we are taking steps like our agency ro and are focusing on terror of, uh, terror outfits like laskar e taiba mohammad jaish e mohammad al qaeda and uh, the extent of relation links between different pak agencies madrasa clerics ngos and various terror groups targeting afghan and india so yeah so um, there's a good step towards curbing the terror and terror related activities led from the neighbors especially in the pakistan in the indian territory so heron i would like to ask you one question ki international stage pe how india has taken this issue of dealing with terrorism um on the international level india is leading the world towards having a common uh, platform and um, you know common plan to target terrorism and has made terrorism a global agenda along with that um, we are having multiple arrangements multiple under you know multiple treaties with various global leaders in the intelligence in the counter uh, terror sharing operations so i can cite even uh, i can cite this much now if you have you can okay now we can move forward the chinese military releases short film on taiwan reunification so taiwan and china relations are very much strained though china considered taiwan as republic of um, you know the territory of china's republic but uh, taiwan's claims are somewhat different china claims itself as independent and puts uh, allegation on china to you know to provide a kind of dictatorship rule over that one of china's best known ancient paintings are kept separately in a museum so china is um, from various angles from diplomatic angle from hard core from soft core power every um, from every method china is showing the world that taiwan is considered as a republic republican territory of china and uh, so this is a kind of sign from china to make taiwan its the part then china's lunar mission to carry payload from pakistan so here the important note we can take that how the pakistan is collaborating with china in various fields as far as the infrastructure concerned as far as the economy concerned with the help of belt road initiative and now we are seeing the collaboration in the space sector also where the chang e6 lunar mission which is going uh, of china to the uh, lunar mission to the moon will have, will carry payload from pakistan and will bring back samples from far side of the moon the aikitan basin this is a particular area where this mission is about to go and aims at landing at the south pole so aikitan basin is an important um, information which is located at the south pole of our moon then uh, yeah we can vaccination for bird flu starts despite trade risk so france has started vaccinating ducks against bird flu so we are seeing that bird flu these are the common environmental problems and endemics and pandemics we are seeing across the world because of the lack of attention to our environment so we should focus on that and us is trying to impose trade curbs on french poultry imports so this is definitely going to have some economic hardships for the france poultry industry and it is considered as a global spread of highly pathogenic avian influenza so national pension scheme um is an important thing on which various strikes various protests are going on these days and state government employees regularize mid career blame and pay for lower place so these are some issues which are going in the old pension scheme 
because from 2004 onwards we have new pension scheme which do not provide us uh, the pension which earlier we used to get our parents used to get after you know our elder used to get under the old pension system uh, which was considered the half of your last term salary but that was stopped by the uh, government because of some financial concerns financial backloads and to provide that to invest that money into the infrastructure and the nation development and in a contributory scheme you obviously get a very low pension compared to flat 50 percent of the full service so as i mentioned that in the old pension system you used to get 50 percent of your last term salary but in the new pension scheme you will just get a normal pension which is i think of three thousand or four thousand per month um, so on the basis of that um, the state government employees across india are coming to delhi and doing protests so let's see what the government actually takes action on that and SEBI extend deadline for listed companies to confirm or deny market rumors. So this is an effective um, steps which the SEBI is taking to prevent the rumors to affect our listed companies and their financial consignments. What is LODR? It is listing obligations and disclosure requirement rules of SEBI, which is to be implemented by the listed companies. What are listed companies and what are unlisted companies? You can Google actually that. And uh, so now we can move forward. And uh, Heron, I would just like to also add up that there's also one more concern related to insider trading, which is there. So some measures like proper dis timely disclosure of the information so as to promote more transparency and accountability in the capital market. So that's important. And these are certain steps which are being taken by SEBI. Yeah. So with the UAE, we have the fuel diplomatic relations, the fuel prices um, determination always used to be a concern as far as uh, the UAE is concerned. So investments to determine the fuel prices at the pump. So UAE and Saudi Arabia are the two important, the priority countries which are investing a lot of financial, a lot of finance, a lot of energy in the state of Jammu and Kashmir these days under these special economic zones which have been created by the government of India to, to upgrade. Uh, and to promote the inclusivity in the Jammu and Kashmir. So fuel prices consumers pay at the pump will be driven by willingness to keep investing in the fossil fuels. This is a statement which the UAE's Minister of uh, Fuel has given that oil industry leaders reiterated the need for going investment to smoothen the energy transition. So we should focus on the energy transition to actually come out of this um, you know, influx of fuel determination fuel price determination. Saudi Arabia and Russia have also extended 1.3 billion barrels per day of additional voluntarily uh, cuts until the end of the year. So these are some important news as far as the oil sector is concerned. And edible oil firms suffer big losses on import surge and sales fall by 8% on the year. So more than important is that edible oil usage as far as the health standards are concerned and what are the new areas coming in the edible oil uh, fund? So sharply subdued level of edible oil price in the global market nearly a government resort to pass the benefit onto consumers. The government is also providing some sort of benefit, some sort of subsidies on them to the farmers, to the consumers, so that the prices can come down. And there are some exports and imports concern also on the edible oil farms uh, areas, which the government is constantly watching on and having an oversight. Then our private sector is leading today's India's development with the Adani plans to build 10 gigawatt solar uh, watt manufacturing capacity. So by 2027. So these are some few steps of the rising private industries in India, which are promoting the corporate social responsibility in India by investing in the social economic governance area. So these are few personalities who protected the world from the coronavirus and they have been provided the note. The very first lady is Kathleen Kaiko. She's a professor at Hungary University. So, and the second personality, we have the Drew Wisman, who is the director of RNA Innovation Penn Institute. So they have been awarded with the Nobel Prize for their achievement, for their endeavor for the coronavirus vaccines. So there are two types of vaccines that um, use the complete virus, live and attenuated vaccines. Yeah, they use a weakened version of the pathogen, like in the case of commonly used oral polio vaccine, while an inactivated vaccine used kill pathogens. So this is an important note 
that a live vaccine use a pathogen which is a living and inactivated vaccine use killed pathogens to produce the vaccine and to actually provide some relief. The rabies vaccine is an example of inactivated vaccine. Then some technologies they use like mRNA in the vaccine development. And this is four takeaways from the Bihar survey, uh, which are that they carry the potential of new battles in Bihar. Could be a big idea about a challenge of BJP's Hindutva plus welfare pitch. So we can move forward on this. So how is the Gandhi's relationship with the music found in Eco in his politics? So we can say that Gandhi's music was comprising the ethos, the cosmic elements, which had the connection with the politics and were making the politics an ethical politics, a Ram Raj politics, having Maryadas, having conditions, having standards and having topmost the character of politicians to provide a welfare state in the country. Okay, that's all, Pravesh. We can end it now. Okay, so this much uh, today we have in the Indian Express newspaper. So we'll take tomorrow the next newspaper. Thank you so much. Stay with us and keep watching. Answer that. Thank you.